Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Gaudi, and over the past couple of months, I've had a growing interest in 3D printing, and after a ton of research, I finally bought a printer. I bought the Voxlab Aquila. What? You never heard of it? Well, let me explain. So in this video, I'm gonna share my experience with the 3D printer so far. I've had it for about a month now, and I've done a decent amount of printing. But before we get into that, I want to share my story of why I'm into uh, getting into 3D printing and how I arrived at the Voxlab Aquila. So I started getting into 3D printing for four reasons. So I am a mechanical engineer by trade and by education, and 3D printing would help me develop skills like, obviously, 3D printing, um, practicing my designing critical thinking skills, and then finally, practicing with other CAD softwares that I don't use at work. Uh, I primarily use Creo at work. Now, the second reason why I'm getting into 3D printing is because I'm very interested in designing, prototyping, and producing functional and decorative uh, prints. And I can use these prints around the house or even develop uh, this into a business and sell uh, products that I make. Uh, the third reason is it's fun. And the fourth reason why I want to get into 3D printing is because it's gotten so cheap it is so cheap now to get into 3D printing. And I'm gonna to refer to the great almighty resource that is Wikipedia to help explain this. So in 1980, uh, owning a 3D printer would cost you upwards of $300,000. And that is nuts because in 2014, that cost went all the way down to a couple thousand dollars. And then finally in 2020 and into 2021, getting an entry level uh, 3D printer only costs like couple hundred bucks. And so because of those reasons, it's really a good time to get into 3D printing. All right, now let's move on to how I even found the Voxlab Aquila and why I went with it. Now, I began my research journey uh, a couple months ago, actually like maybe four months ago. I really wanted a 3D printer. I'm not sure what exactly triggered it, but um, I really wanted one. And so I started doing some research. I found a bunch of different printers. There are so many printers right now. It made choosing one really hard. And just to name a few, you've got the Ender 3, the Ender 3 V2, the Ender 3 Pro, uh, the Prusa MK3, the Prusa Mini, the BQB1, the Soval SV01. Uh, what else you got? The FL Sun Q5. Oh, and the uh, Elegoo Neptune 2, which is permanently out of stock and seems to not exist after they released it. Now, throughout all my research, I found that the Ender 3, the Ender 3 Pro, and the Ender 3 V2, which are all very similar systems, uh, were the most commonly uh, suggested as your first 3D printer. Now, the Ender 3 series is not the best printer out there, but it is very affordable and does a good job at that price point. It ranges from about $180 to $280, very cheap. But uh, I was really bored one day and I was scrolling Amazon, waiting for the Ender 3 V2 to go on sale, and I stumbled across the Voxlab Aquila. And I was like, wow, this kind of kind of cool, kind of cheap. It was listed at $170, and so I clicked on the Amazon link, and I was like, hmm, this sounds almost like the Ender 3 V2, and it pretty much is. It's basically a clone for like $100 cheaper, because most commonly you'll find the Ender 3 V2 is priced around $260 to $270, and the Voxelab Aquila is around $160 to $170. Of course, you get the Ender 3 V2 on sale for about $230 to $240, bucks, but still, that's way more expensive than the Voxlab Aquila is normally priced at. In terms of specifications, the Voxlab Aquila is, again, a clone of the Ender 3 V2. It's got a mean well power supply, so it's fairly safe and reliable. It's got silent stepper motor drivers, so it's not squealing and annoying the hell out of you. It's got a removable glass bed, practically the same thing as the Enders. Now you might be thinking that mm, maybe this is just some random ripoff uh, fake company that's selling this thing. And that was an initial fear of mine until I found out that Voxlab is a subsidiary brand of Flashforge, which produces very good, also very expensive, 3D printers. And so I have more confidence in this company to deliver me a product that isn't fake. So in the end, I ordered the uh, Voxlab Aquila twice because... I initially bought it at $170 and then it went on sale for $160, so I bought that and returned the first one. Woo. So finally, let's get to uh, my experiences with the Voxlab Aquila. Now, overall, I really haven't had any real issues with the printer. So first, let's talk about assembly. Uh, assembly was okay. It was a little cumbersome and it took me about 45 minutes, um, but also having a helping hand is really helpful. Shout out to my girlfriend. Thank you. 
and their instructions are somewhat vague in certain instances, but when that happened, I went to Voxelab's YouTube channel, and they actually have uh, several very useful videos, um, one specifically on assembly, uh, which would prove very useful when you're putting this thing together. Now, some things to note when you're assembling the 3D printer. The first thing I noticed is that a lot of the uh, screw heads are not machined properly or something because the uh, Allen wrench or the screwdriver would not fit properly into the head of the screw. It seems like there's an issue with uh, quality control with their screw heads. Now, the other thing I've noticed and I've read in other people's reviews is that the um, the eccentric nuts on the V wheels uh, sometimes are shipped a little loose. So definitely check those and tighten them if necessary, especially the eccentric nuts on your uh, print bed. So after I assembled the 3D printer and I leveled the bed, I went ahead and started printing. I used a sliced file from their included SD card and it came out pretty well. It was like this red looking hook carabiner thingamajig. And I was really pleased that the first print came out so well. So some positive items I want to point out with the printer. Uh, one is the color screen. It's pretty responsive. The knob works fine. And um, it's at an angle that doesn't have a glare from what I can tell. I can see it. So it's great. Additionally, the Aquila does have a um, filament loading um, program to help you load filament. So you don't have to hold that little lever arm and shove the filament through and potentially break that little arm. And that's a very common problem with enders. And you'll probably see that with the Aquilas. So I wanted to print some other things. Uh, so I ordered some Hatchbox PLA in blue and I started slicing stuff in Prusa Slicer uh, mainly. And I started printing and I'll go ahead and throw some of these prints up on screen. Um, most of the stuff I print are mods for the printer just to help me practice and, and get better at it. So when I do create things and, and maybe even sell them, you know, I'll have that practice. And of course, printing uh, mods for your printer, those are functional parts. So it has a use. I'm not just going to throw away the stuff. Now, speaking of mods, I will have another follow-up video talking about the mods that I have on the printer and the mods that I think you probably want to do and then some other optional stuff. Now, the one thing I do want to complain about with the uh, Aquila Voxelab is it's noisy. And the reason why it's noisy, it's the fans. The fans are pretty noisy, um, especially the power supply fan. That thing is loud. But this is something that you're going to experience with the Ender 3. And there are tons of people that have suggested ways to replace the fans and quieten the fans down. And that's something that I'll be trying to do. And outside of the fan noise, I really can't complain about the printer because it just prints so well and the price is so low. I don't know what to find that's really wrong with it. So my overall thoughts on the printer, I really, really like the Voxelab Aquila. And I think it's just gonna be as good as the Ender 3 V2. And for the Aquila to be 80 to $100 cheaper than the Ender 3 V2, that's a steal. I, I, I don't know why you would choose the Ender 3 over the Voxelab Aquila. I think if things continue this way, the Voxelab Aquila will overtake the Ender 3 V2 as the best budget 3D printer. And those are my thoughts on the Aquila Voxelab. I really appreciate you guys stopping by and watching the video. Uh, if you liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I will be doing a follow-up video on the mods that I do to this printer and which mods I think you should do and what are optional or very useful. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.